We are called the Marine Corps of St. Pius X. We remain until our last breath the, the children, the sons of St. Pius X. Now, Father and the Son and Holy Ghost, Amen. My dear friends, today is Our Lady's birthday, so let us all uh, wish her uh, a happy 2033rd birthday. So she's uh, getting very old, you may say, but in fact she's not. Eternity is eternal youth. And it shows also this number, uh, shows what eternity is in a sense, because you know, after some time, after a little while, you know, uh, people will ask you, what's your age? And then one will say, my age is 1,240,000,000 and uh, 40,000 and uh, 25 years. And the other one is going to say 1,240,000,000 and uh, barely a difference at the end of the number. So it shows, you know, that she has entered eternity and she's waiting for us from there. And um, today the gospel is about the lepers. And uh, it's a title we can give to her today. Is that she's the queen of the lepers. We are those lepers. We are what's left, you know, of the uh, Catholic Church. We are not the Catholic Church itself, but the, the Catholic Church is shrinking and shrinking and shrinking the damage done by Pope Francis keeps on getting bigger, you know, as he prepares for uh, another wave of uh, destruction in his uh, synod of Amazonia. Now, in the past, when they did those things, disasters would happen afterwards. Now, the forest of Amazonia is burning ahead of his coming, and the whole big city of Sao Paulo was smoked by the smokes of Satan big smokes. So, so we are, well, let us not pretend that we are the Church of the Latter-day Saints, you know. We are not the LDS, we are the LDL, the Church of the Latter-day Lepers, you know. And uh, it's, uh, our, uh, our Lady is immaculate precisely to um, deliver us from our leprosy by her immaculateness. What should we wonder more in Our Lady? The fact that she's immaculate? Of course, you may say she's immaculate because God is God, our God is holy. He needs a temple which is suitable, which is clean, where he can dwell. And that's why Our Lady is immaculate, to be a proper habitation of the Holy Ghost and our Lord. So that's wonderful, that's an immense mystery. She's immaculate from her con conception. She never had anything to do. But what is more wonderful is the fact that she bears with us. The tendency, you know, when you, uh, when you increase in virtue, you are more sensible to, to sin, you know. Your, 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 your level of perceptivity, uh, perceptivity of sin increases. So sin becomes more disgusting. That's why some of those who start a bit on the way of justice veer off easily into Phariseeism because they express this disgust. It's a natural disgust. As you draw out of sin, then it's normal to be disgusted by sin. And so some go on the way of pride. They become disgusted. They separate themselves from the others uh, who still have the faith when they, there was no need of a separation, uh, they are the Pharisees. And then there are, there are those who still have a high sensibility of sin, but who bear with the sinners. And Our Lady is definitely in, uh, in that category. She does not blame us for uh, having uh, done what we have done. You know? She does not attack us for having been the murderers of her son. On the contrary, 
on the, on the contrary, she made a, of her heart the Mount Moria, the Mount of Sacrifice. That's why one can say that the greatest figure of our Blessed Mother is not a female, it's not Judith or Esther or Deborah or Rebecca, Sarah, uh, you name it, you know, not one of these ladies. But in fact, the, higher, the highest figure of Our Lady in the Old Testament is Abraham in, uh, itself. Because it's, to, it's a parent, a parent who was of his own accord, immolates his child or her child. She's the parent of our Lord. Which parent would be able to do such a sacrifice? You know, God did not accept that sacrifice from Abraham out of the question, so he stopped the knife. But stopped the knife. He just wanted to know, so he stops the knife. So in the, in the case of Abraham, you know, there is a great interruption, you know. And look how troubled the heart of Abraham was. Certainly, when, uh, especially when Jacob, you know, when Isaac asked him, you know, Father, is there any victim for our sacrifice? And uh, Abraham replies, the Lord will provide my son. Probably his heart was torn when he did it. And Abraham would definitely not tell his wife. He would definitely not tell Sarah that he was going to kill Isaac. Because that's the plan. Because Sarah could not bear it. Because for a woman, the death of her own child. And by, uh, by, uh, by the one, one one's parents doing the, the death in such a circumstances, it's impossible. But there our Lord comes and he meets our lady at the fourth station of the cross, I believe, at the gate of Jerusalem, somewhat to request her permission to proceed. And it is going with her, to, to be with her consent and with her permission and not without it and with her full collaboration that our Lord is going to, is going to, to complete his, uh, his passion. So Our Lady is much more than uh, Abraham, even though Abraham is a beautiful figure of uh, our Blessed Lord. So she went in Calvary near Mount Moria. Now, our Lord was immolated on Calvary, which is very near Moria. There, a distinction had to be made so we can, as in the epistle of today, we can make the distinction between the law and the promise. That's necessary to make. But otherwise, our Lord would have been crucified on Mount Moria. Because this is what the sacrifice of Abraham represents. The immolation of a child by his parent. In that case, by our Blessed Virgin Mary. This idea is not of mine, it's uh, of St. John Hughes, who started a devotion to the uh, Immaculate Heart of Mary in earnest. And likewise, um, the, uh, our Blessed Mother was sacrificed on the altar of uh, the Sacred Heart of Our Lord. Our Lord's heart was so affected it was his greatest suffering, to see the intense suffering of his own mother. So truly, Our Lady is, uh, is a worthy mother, whose birthday is our life. Because she exists, now we can uh, get some life. And uh, she's the mother of us lepers and criminals. And she's a mother to us, she decided to be the mother of us. It is on the other foot of Calvary that she became our mother. So let us promise to her something much better than 2,033 candles. Something much better than that. That is, uh, to, let us promise to her the amendment of our lives. So she must be consoled to see that many more of you now come to confession. And I barely had the time to finish. I tried to go as fast as I could. I barely had the time to finish on time. So we'll continue in that way and offer to her truly the amendment of your heart. Because it is what it's all about. All about. To get out the leprosy of sin, the stench of sin from uh, the consent 
of your will, the consent of your heart to get rid of it. There is no other way for us to rebuild the church. Otherwise, we are hypocrites and uh, we will be thrown aside by Almighty God. We'll find another replacement, another people to wish to Our Lady an eternal birthday. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.